Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at Worship. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost and it is July 26th. Welcome to New Song. We begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us.
Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown into the greatest of shrubs, it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good into baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The kingdom of heaven is like pearly gates, streets paved with gold, angels, cherubim and seraphim, harps, lots of harps. A throne with radiant light flooding in all around it. God the Father sitting there on the throne with Jesus at God's right hand. The kingdom of heaven is like a banquet table. What images come to your mind when you hear the words? The kingdom of heaven is like. Dr. Caroline Lewis, professor of homiletics, which is a fancy name for preaching at Luther Seminary, suggests that for many people, the kingdom of heaven will be in, envisioned differently according to each person's needs. We might think that the kingdom of heaven is as majestic as the great vistas of the Rockies or as strong and tall as the great sequoias of California. We might envision the kingdom as vast as the view from the Atlantic Ocean's edge or as countless as the grains of sand. I think we tend to look at the kingdom 
as that which would impress us here in this life. Things that are, are powerful, that are important, that are grand. Yet, looking at these parables of Jesus, it's easy to be startled by images that they portray. As we begin to unpack the parables, we notice surprising twists and, and turns. The parable of the mustard seed, for instance. Today, you may have a jar of mustard or mustard seeds tucked in the back of your spice cabinet. You may use it to enhance the flavor of your cooking, but you certainly don't want to plant those seeds in your garden. They will absolutely take over. They will compete for good soil, and they will inhibit other plants' growth. The mustard plant is pervasive, in other words, the mustard seed of this parable is like the kudzu of today. So, the kingdom of heaven is like kudzu? Now, how's that for theological clarity? The truth is, I hate kudzu. No matter how I've tried to deal with it in our yard, it keeps coming back with a vengeance. It has taken over my, my trees and my shrubs, and its tentacle-like vines have entwined branches to the very top of the trees. And the vines are strong. They seem to grow right before my very eyes, and it's virtually impossible to kill. So what would it mean for the kingdom of heaven to look like a wild, out-of-control kutsu line? Jesus uses an image of something that folks don't like, don't want, to compare to the kingdom. A twist. Maybe the kingdom of heaven isn't near as fragile as we sometimes think it is. Maybe it's strong and insidious, creeping into the areas of our lives that we try to protect. Maybe it's not tameable, but alive and vibrant. Maybe it's the kingdom of heaven that's breaking into this crazy world in which we find ourselves exposing the areas that we want to keep hidden, tearing the scabs off of our old wounds, causing us to focus on what it truly means to be a child of God, living in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. You see, I think we want to equate the kingdom of heaven to calm and peace. We, we want life to be like the way we think it has always been. We, we want a God who is predictable, a God who fits nicely up in our cupboard, one that we can pull down when we are in need, a God who will fix what all is wrong with the world out there, but not address what's wrong in the here. But that's not the image of the kingdom of heaven in this parable. Now, this parable is about a kingdom taking over in spite of all the efforts to the contrary. The parable of the leaven is much the same. You see, unlike the yeast of today, which is domesticated, leaven was not a wanted ingredient. In fact, leaven in that culture was almost always thought of as evil or unclean, thus 
the holiness of unleavened bread. Leaven was developed by taking old bread, leaving it in a dark, damp place until it molds, and as it rots, the leaven is formed. If it's not spoiled enough, then the leaven is useless, and if it's too spoiled, it can cause food poisoning and even prove fatal. There are several things in this parable which causes its twists and turns. First, there is the leaven itself, that Jesus is comparing the kingdom of heaven to unholy and unclean leavened bread seems problematic. Secondly, there is the issue of the woman that Jesus tells in the parable. Jesus was comparing the kingdom to something that was being created by a woman, that the woman is involved in this process. You see, in this culture, the men would have been pure, and then thirdly, but not reflected in this translation, the woman said, hides the leaven in the dough, further bringing the bread into an unholy context. So leaven equals unclean. Woman equals unclean. Hiding equals unclean. So what on earth is the kingdom of heaven like this parable? I think that it's in its outcome. Three measures of flour and the accompanying leaven is enough to make bread for an entire wedding feast. The kingdom can spring forth from those things that were deemed unclean. It, like the mustard plant, is alive and vibrant and untamed. It literally rises to the occasions to which God has called it. It, too, takes over and leavens the whole batch. Oh, how we have tried to domesticate God. To make God in our image Yet we cannot even understand, much less control God. The two paired parables that follow, the parable of the treasure in the field and the pearl of great value, speak of what I think it means to be all in. I like to think of it as being in love, being so smitten that you can't think of anything else. You, you live for that person. You want nothing more than to be in their presence. Remember the early days of dating? Wasn't it like a treasure hidden in a field? Did you find that one in a million, your one and only? Did that person capture your heart? Were you willing to do anything to be in that relationship? A man stumbles upon a treasure hidden in a field. He rehides it and then he sells literally all he has and buys the field. He was all in. He gave up everything for this priceless treasure. Similarly, the parable of the priceless pearl. In searching for fine pearls, the merchant finds one of great value. He's all in. He sells all that he had and he buys the pearl. The kingdom of God is like a person 
who is so engaged in that relationship that they commit all that they are and all that they have into keeping it. Oh, to be so in love with God as God is with us. The kingdom of heaven is like that. Like God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The parable of the fish is much like the parable of the wheat and the weeds. You see, the kingdom of heaven is like a net cast into the sea. And an abundance of fish is brought to shore. In sorting, the good fish are thrown into baskets and the bad fish are thrown out. So it will be at the end of the age, says Jesus. God will separate the good from the bad. These different parables, fascinating, isn't it? that Jesus uses such different images for the kingdom of heaven. While we might have expected or wanted clear and concise details, Jesus gives us glimpses, picture words, to flesh out the various aspects of the kingdom. So what might you have gleaned from these stories of a mustard seed, a bit of leaven, a treasure in a field, a pearl of great value, and a magnificent haul of fish? Let your imagination open for you these parables that God may reveal the truth of them. Wrestle with them. Don't turn too quickly to conventional wisdom. Allow the Spirit of God to dance in your heart. Expand your mind and develop within you holy curiosity. Where are you seeing the kingdom of heaven being lived out in your life and in the life of God's church. Amen.
we join together professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. this time. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and in all places. Embolden our witness now and each day as we gather from place to place for all your saints. Festly, Bob Moser. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love. We offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Now take a moment to say thank you for your gifts and your contributions, for your offerings, and for all that you do to help the ministry that we carry out on your behalf here at Emmanuel can continue to thrive and be a vital part of the community in which we serve. Thank you for your generosity.
Give us grace to live as your risen daughters and sons, shining in your marvelous light until you gather all creation to the heavenly table where Christ reigns in glory forever. Amen. And now may the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, restore, support, strengthen, and bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Be well. Stay safe. God bless.